An example is the scholar who used Bay theorem, the atheist Dr. Richard Carrier, and there are Christians who've done the same, using the Bayes theorem as if this is an objective way to show that Christianity, uh, that atheism is correct in its interpretation of Jesus. This theorem tries to show the probability of each set of probable causes for an absurd outcome can be logically uh, ascertained from knowledge of the probability of each cause and the conditional probability of the um, understanding of the outcome of each cause. To be fair, it must also be noted that evangelical scholars have also used the Bayes theorem to prove their case for the resurrection. I have to say that again. But the Bayes theorem is not used by any known historian. Uh, it's not used by any reputable historian, really. Or if it is, it's very rare. Mo most historians don't use it. What this argument is from the Bayes theorem is an argument from um, scientism. Susan Hack, an atheist, has given a great lecture in warning us about using science as some authority to give our ideas more kudos than in reality. Science does not, act, does not actually substantiate but remains neutral on the resurrection of Christ. If you look at Susan Hack's Six Signs of Scientism, Dr. Hack's talk at the, Ro at the Rotman Institute of Philosophy at the University of Western Ontario on January the 7th, 2011, engages scientism, the view that natural science is the most authoritative way of looking at the world interpretations of life. What I'm trying to say is the atheists like Richard Carrier who would try and use some kind of scientific basis to critique the resurrection i.e. use the Bayes theorem, it's only a form of scientism, it's only a form of trying to use science as an authority but the Bayes theorem is not actually scientific in terms of historical inquiry, it's very subjective. Um, David Bartholomew, uh, a, a, a statistician, uh, in page 117 of The Resurrection of Jesus in Mike Lacona's IVP book, writes, the great difficulty applying the theory is that it's often not at all clear what value should be given to the prior probability. David Bartholomew says, thus the base theorem is subjective, page 117, Lacona the resurrection of Jesus. Dr. McClough says virtually no historian uses it, page 117 in uh, Lacona's book Resurrection of Jesus. Dr. Tucker says it is clear how Bayes theorem can be worked, it is unclear how Bayes theorem can be worked out in practice, page 117, Resurrection of Jesus. So We've got to acknowledge that we have presuppositions. We've got to acknowledge that we come to the historical information with pre-ideas. Now, does that mean to say that if all these history of all these scholars shows that they're biased, does that mean that we can't get to historical facts or information? No. What it means is that we have to be aware of whether our presuppositions are consistent and the best presuppositions and we have to also try to make sh limit our presuppositions in the evaluation of the facts to be honest and fair. The atheist position, generally not all atheists, but the atheists that we dealt with here, the Sam Harris and Dawkins and Onfre and Hitchens, would see reality as materialistic. They would all be committed to evolution. These are their presuppositions. Now is that consistent for historical inquiry? If we believe in evolution, then there is no meaning ultimate to life. There is no general pattern to history. So why would we try to look at history for a history for a meaning if 
our own intellectual foundation doesn't provide that. Our presupposition is in conflict. There is a uh, a disparity between our presupposition and the actual historical inquiry. The Christian position says that history has a purpose and the Christian position has the uh, presupposition that reality is real and that when we investigate it we can come to knowledge so it is a basis for objective knowledge so the actually um, the Christian presupposition actually is the better presupposition to go and do history than an atheist position or a skeptical position now this because all as atheism is is an absence of belief due to a lack of evidence but what the atheist doesn't realize is that that doesn't wash because one has to deconstruct the language that the atheist is using that requires intellectual tools of philosophy linguistics it's not enough it's not as simple as to say I don't believe in God due to a lack of evidence in other words the point is that the atheist, <coughs> whether they like it or not, will have presuppositions that impinge on their understanding of reality and that impinge on whether their presuppositions are consistent in the historical task. So there has to be a discussion on the table about the atheist presupposition and the Christian presupposition. Other presuppositions that uh, play for the Christian is the Bible for the Christian the Bible is the Word of God the Old Testament is the outline to the New Testament etc for the Christian presupposition there is a belief in God the Creator for the atheist there's often a, a presupposition that religion is no good and is controlling so all these presuppositions play and have a role in our interpretation of the facts. They have to be on the table for discussion before we get to the historical task. I would say that the Christian position is a positive position providing a positive epistemology, a positive historiography in order to do historical thinking. I would say that it's the only way Christianity gives you a grand narrative of history that is to say that history has an, a meaning and a purpose and is moving towards a meaning and purpose and if that's the case that it means that if I'm doing historical inquiry that it is purposeful meaningful and provides real knowledge but if I believe in evolution if I believe that history is not going anywhere then why would I want to try and understand the past the other thing in historical inquiry is that is secondly is the enlightenment had a big influence on how we understand history the enlightenment was a particular cultural phenomena and yet that particular cultural phenomena has if that particular cultural phenomena is biased why is the enlightenment position more superior than say a Japanese historians methodology or a Chinese historians methodology so the enlightenment presuppositions have to be critiqued before we do historical inquiry and debate whether Jesus rose from the dead so the atheist assumes the enlightenment position but the enlightened position can be challenged on many fronts for example the enlightenment split reason and morality it made a dichotomy between what is human it put more value on reason than anything else but actually human beings are actually not only reasonable they are moral and you cannot have reason without morality or morality without reason but morality is at the heart of every intellectual task you cannot do science without being honest you cannot do philosophy 
say you cannot do history without being honest. In other words, morality is at the very core of how we know. And the atheist position puts tremendous emphasis on reason and tremendous emphasis on the material understanding of the universe from a scientific perspective which goes directly back to the enlightenment position but the Christian position is that we're not only rational we are moral that we live in a moral universe this position is consistent as we look at the reality of each position if the position of the atheist is correct about history that is to say we have evolved then that is to say that the reality of contingent uh, information is based on pure cause and effect of the, the implication of that is that the human human beings do not have free will that they are products of their environment they are products of DNA but they are just part of the material cause and effect that is the problem with the materialist perspective on life and it impinges on our historical task because why should we do historical tasks because a we are not moral because we have no free will but the Christian position is that the universe is a moral universe that we are morally accountable that when we make decisions and do decisions we are free to do so that means when we inquire in the historical task we are looking at the actions the free actions of human beings and are able to assess them and we can assess them in order to make choices free choices in the present so as we can see that the Christian presuppositions are actually more amiable to the historical task than an atheist presupposition So presuppositions, whether the atheist likes it or not, or whether the skeptic likes it or not, presuppositions have to be debated and discussed. But does that mean we cannot come to a, uh, an objective understanding of history? What it means is we can come to the facts of history. But it, it just means that our bias will taint those facts and so we have to be aware of how our presuppositions are tainting the facts and we have to make sure that we limit them to a certain extent but there is a, a value and central and important debate as to say to ask the question whose presuppositions are more consistent with the historical task this is a big debate that is not debated on campuses amongst atheists and Christians. It is a big debate that is not properly been done in the academic world and needs to be done much more. Most academics will spend some time on their presuppositions, but the vast majority of academics do not do enough reflection on their presuppositions and if they did they would actually adopt different methodology different presupposition if they realized how inconsistent the presuppositions are especially in the nature I could go on more and expand on that much more but I'll leave it there for discussion and debate for anybody who wants to engage with me on that please feel free to make comments if you make stupid comments you'll be blocked but I will